Anderson Cooper 360, weeknights at 8 and 10 on CNN. He had to have come through the woods in this direction. Atlanta resident Bo DuBose had his home broken into on a rainy night in June. He took this pane of glass out from the outside and removed it and crawled through that opening. DuBose showed me the burglar's path. First, the dining room where he stole a silver mug that once belonged to George II. All DuBose has left is this photo. The mug was worth about $20,000. Then he went over here and was smart enough to know that this was for silver. This is an atom, call them knife boxes, but it's actually for silver service. So it's about 1785. Raised that up and took the entire sterling silver set oh. from here. About a month later, these homes in Athens, Georgia, were also hit, 90 miles away from Bow de Bows. In each case, silver was stolen. Investigators were stumped who, they wondered, was brazen enough to slip inside in the middle of the night and haul away priceless collections of sterling silver. 900 miles to the north, Connecticut detective Cornell Ambrosini had a pretty good idea who was behind these thefts. After all, he'd spent most of his career tracking the notorious burglar, Blaine Nordahl. He was first arrested in New Jersey in 1983. And over the years, he's believed to have burglarized as many as 500 homes, carting away a stunning $10 million worth of silver. Nordahl was last paroled in 2010, and Detective Abruzzini had been waiting patiently for him to strike again. In February, he got his first tip that perhaps Nordahl was back at it, when a detective from Aiken, South Carolina called wanting to know if a rash of silver burglaries down south matched Nordahl's M.O. He said, tell you what, why don't you send me your crime scene photos and send me your narrative reports. Let me take a look at them. And then, so he sent them up to me. And, I mean, it wasn't even two minutes you look at these things. They're carbon copies of what we had in Greenwich. I mean, they're pretty much like overlays. You knew right away it was the same No guy. doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Abruzzini knew Nordahl had gone to live with his sister in Florida. So he slowly began building a map of thefts in the southern states. He was soon convinced Nordahl was behind the disappearance of one of the most high-profile silver thefts he's ever known. Silver spoons made by Paul Revere, taken from this North Carolina plantation. Soon, Abruzzini was advising investigators in at least six southern states about what to look for. He's about five foot three. I've seen crime scenes where Blaine's actually gone into homes through dog doors. That's how small he is. Here in Greenwich, Connecticut, one of the most affluent communities in the country, Nordahl was pretty active back in 1995 and 96, burglarizing seven homes in all, including Ivana Trump. From her, he stole 120 silver salt and pepper shakers. And in another burglary here, he made off with more than $200,000 worth of silver, part of a flatware set for 110 people. Did he get sort of a high from doing this? He told us once that, you know, for the most part, life is very mundane, and something like this gives him a high, gives him something to look forward to. Silver pictures. Back in Atlanta, Bo DeBose was tallying up his losses. The burglar had raided his silver closet, too, running off with $150,000 worth of sterling silver while DeBose and his wife slept. Investigators believe it was the work of Blaine Nordahl, and once again, security cameras weren't enough to stop him. Police believe somehow Nordahl managed to sneak around not only the homeowner's camera, but his neighbors too. Filmmaker Tyler Perry lives just down the street, and his security cameras didn't catch Nordahl either. But that didn't stop investigators from moving in. Just last week, deputies arrested him in Florida. At 51, Blaine Nordahl now faces 100 years in prison. Three decades after his burglary career began, his taunting of investigators may finally have come to an end. Randy Kay, CNN, Greenwich, Connecticut.